Okay. Uh, welcome, everyone. Uh, this is the um, November meeting of the Work District Council, and we are doing a uh, another version of uh, hybrid. Uh, so we've got a number, we have seven of us here, which is twice as many as last time. Yeah, that's right. So we're moving back to in person, but yeah, not too, not incredibly quickly. <laughs> um, but uh, we, we will record this so that anybody who wants to uh, can. Uh, we are expecting um, in person or remotely? No, no. Uh, the senator Senators. should be on the. Um, okay. If, if she's a little bit late, then we can just keep moving, but she should be on. Great, okay. Um, um, we are, uh, we're going to start out as we always do with our uh, report from our um, friends in blue. Um, and we have Officer Champa, Champa with us, is yes, that right? That's correct. Great, if you, uh, Officer, do you wanna just uh, tell us what's um, what's been going on in the district? That'd be great. Sure, Mark. Thank you. Uh, we'll be brief. I know we didn't meet last week. With you guys, hopefully we can get in person soon uh, to join you. Uh, just a quick overall uh, rundown. We had one bike theft, two shopliftings in the area, three vandalisms, uh, one B&E to a motor vehicle over uh, in the Clinton Street garage there. We always seem to have a few. Uh, three simple assaults, one aggravated assault, two commercial B&Es, and just two robberies, and that's dating back um, 30 days. So, um, and then just one report I just wanted to briefly touch upon was the incident over at the uh, Harbor Hotel. We won't get too into it. If anyone had any questions, uh, we had the individual there who was um, shooting off um, like flares into the water, and he started throwing some syringes of his into the water, and officers had to. Um, kind of climb up on top of a few things. Uh, they were put in some danger. One officer did actually um, get poked with a needle. He is okay. Um, he got this individual the help that he needed. He was transported and sectioned over to the hospital. Um, but I know you guys are probably, it was, it was kind of a big incident. If you have any questions, I am uh, here to answer. Other than that, we don't have much. So um, without any questions, just let me know. Officer Chempa, do you want to talk about the toys program? Um, so yes, um, on the 14th, are you guys hosting something on the 14th or attending something on the 14th? We are, we are, we are. We are. Okay, so um, the toys just, um, we just need them to be unwrapped. Um, make sure we don't wrap them. Um, we, we will attend, I should be able to attend myself. Um, so however you want us to, to grab them, we can take them and bring them over to the station. Um, other than that, if it's easier, if you have people that can't attend and they want to bring the toys over to the local station, we'll accept them either at area one or area 15, which is over in Charlestown. So, uh, whatever is, is best for you, um, you, you just let us know and, and we'll assist. That is so great that you're doing this. We do have a slide the uh, the flyer that you sent out well that that uh <clears throat> your um bpd uh sent out and uh, it's on the screen right now so um perfect was on the screen. i'm sorry it's okay it's okay um but there'll be more coming uh, more information coming so um we just think this is wonderful. Thank you for yeah. For doing just this. just spread the word, and we'll um you know we'll be down to assist, and, and you know whatever's easiest. And we really appreciate um you guys kind of promoting it and helping out. Thank you. It really means a lot. Yeah, great. So um uh, that is a little bit out of order, but we we'll just uh, let everybody know that we are planning our December meeting on the December fourteenth. December fourteenth. And, um, and the aquarium has agreed to host, right? Yes, they're going to be, they're going to co-host with us yeah. um, at the Simon Theater at the aquarium. And it will be the regular time, five to seven. And we haven't worked out all the details, but admissions is 
a a toy for <laughs> for the uh, the toys for kids fund. So I mean, obviously, if you don't have a toy, we will let you in. <laughs> Just bad mouth here. Right. Uh, <laughs> somebody forgets. Exactly. Um, there's no um, there's no agenda for that meeting. It's an opportunity for us uh, to get together in person and um, have a little um, cheer. Right, and also to thank so many people in the community for um, what they do um, for the community in the city, and just you know. We truly appreciate their uh, their support and participation in the Ward District Council and the Ward District neighborhood. Yeah. So we'll look forward to that. Uh, and thank you, Officer for uh, Tampa, for uh, all you do, and uh, also for. Um, uh, I hope you can join us for that. So oh, we will. will. We will. Thank you so much. And th thank you for doing it. Great. Right. Thank you. Please. Hi, this is Matthew at Boston Harbor City Cruises, and I just wanted to thank uh, all the officers for their quick response on that incident you mentioned at Rose Wharf. Uh, the crew of the Odyssey were, um, I don't know, they noticed what was going on, and I don't know if it was them that called, but they were, they were so thankful that uh, officers came to the scene and responded very quickly and, and safely. So just on behalf of the crew of the Odyssey, I just want to thank, thank you again. Yeah. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. I'll relay the message. Thank you. Um, thanks again. So uh, I believe that we have uh, State Senator Lydia Edwards on Zoom someplace. It, uh, is she with us yet? She may not be with us yet. I can't. Um, I'm here. There she is. Oh, you are. oh terrific. Mm -hmm. Great. Welcome, welcome. Thank you for, uh, for joining us. And um, you're of course welcome anytime, and um, we look forward to hearing a little bit about what you've been up to lately and what we should expect from the uh, state senate. Sure. Um, well, uh, next month, actually, in the next meeting that you have, will be my one-year anniversary uh, when I uh, was formally elected uh, to the state senate, and so um, in that time, I got sworn in in January and uh, really got right in the middle of a lot of the. Um, a lot of the bills had already been filed, so my job was just to co-sponsor as many as possible. And then also we went straight to budget. And then as you've seen, it's uh, we, we went all the way literally up until a week or two ago when we finally got the economic development bill done. And uh, that was a result of negotiation and dealing with the tax of 62F, but also making sure we had enough money um, to pay back or follow the law and return tax returns to the people at the same time use ARPA funds and uh, make sure that we're budgeting enough into next year. Um, so globally, uh, things are actually looking pretty well in the Commonwealth and I think a lot of things are settling now that we have Governor-elect Healy um, and my goal in the next couple of months is to meet with her at, with a memo specifically about my district and all the major projects and statewide concerns that we have. Um, uh, the global issues would be about housing and about transportation um, waterfront transportation specifically. And then in terms of internal projects, we have, I think, some, one of the most active um, developing districts in the Commonwealth. Uh, we still have Suffolk Downs. Uh, across the harbor from you, you have Suffolk Downs and you have um, a subway or substation that is very much opposed uh, by the community, but also then you have Government Center Garage, you have um, the new Back Bay huge tower that's being built. Um, and then you also have um, just in general the T in dealing with those issues. Um, on waterfront transportation, I think that's the one thing I got the most done as a senator. I was able to secure a um, million dollars for expansion of a ferry um, to Lynn, actually. Uh, the goal um, was to get Lynn connected to Winthrop, then Winthrop to, um, to Long Wharf, and then from and Quincy continually uh, over to Long Wharf as well. So that, that's an existing ferry system. But it needed to be brought up, I think, um, to more frequency. We wanted weekend service. We really do want an alternative because the biggest, biggest project that I failed to mention that connects both of both of my districts is the Sumner Tunnel. That will be closed, I think, March, uh, 24 hours a day for they say four months mm. in uh, state paper time. But we all know once you get in there, it's an 80-year-old problem. I think four months is being very generous. 
that's assuming everything just goes according to plan. <laughs> and so that's yeah. very frightening for uh, both sides of my district. Um, it's a massive connector from the North Shore to Boston and that we're not using the waterfront and not using um, the natural resource that we have and haven't really built up the infrastructure on it before it is, I think it, it's a shame. So along with a million dollars to just start increasing frequency and getting more uh, drivers, we actually went all the way to Maritime Academy to try and find some more additional boat captains so we can get more people driving the boat. We also secured, and I work with my colleagues across the aisle from Gloucester with um, Senator Bruce Tarr, who is a Republican, uh, Senator Lovely from Salem, Senator Crichton from um, uh, Lynn, uh, myself, and then Senator Keenan. And together we secured $28 million in bonding funds. And we're doing our best to set up our next governor so that she has everything she needs in terms of the cash on hand, but also the ability to borrow up to $28 million for the build out and infrastructure of a robust inter-harbor ferry system from Gloucester down. Mm -hmm. And so yeah, we, we just, it doesn't make any sense at this point why we're not using this resource, um, knowing um, that it works exceptionally well on the South Shore coming up to Boston. And then you could create a whole culture on a local business. You can actually have an economic boom around the ferry system if it's built right. Um, and so right now that's been mostly our focus and it's a little hard with the exiting, the exiting mass GOT members um, because many of them are on their way out, but we're still setting ourselves up to have that also prepared for, for the governor. Um, you know, some, some continued concerns and issues that we have um, in the district is uh, an increase in, in substance use disorder. Um, I see that continually, and that's something that um, trying to meet with not just law enforcement, but also um, trying to engage uh, those individuals in these retreat, uh, treatment recovery homes making sure that they have resources that they need, whether it's resources for job training, for housing, for daycare. I've been working locally and I'm hoping to expand those resources. Um, I wanna just mention, um, I think that was in terms of, oh, and, and, and along with the memo for the district for the governor and dealing with housing and transportation, I'm also working, since we brought up SUDI, we're working with our, our DA, um, Kevin Hayden, um, specifically on how to deal with um, public safety and law enforcement but throughout the entire um, uh, all of Suffolk County. Um, it'll be announced publicly this week, but I'll just let you guys know um, on the preview, I will be chair co-chairing his transition committee as a district attorney specifically in helping him to um, not just enforce, but also um, think about law enforcement, public safety from a perspective um, that I think he, I told him I'd be very direct with him and I'd be very honest with him. And I, I would be uh, working on the creative ways in which we can build trust, which I think he still needs to do, but also make sure that we're safe. So I'm very excited, honestly, and how um, things are going. I, it's a very interesting time. You see potentially a, a recession coming, but right now I can say that financially, the Commonwealth has a, a good amount of resources. We have some of the hardest workers and some of the people who are just absolutely excited about getting um, getting to work. So, um, but that's uh, yeah, that's kind of my you know overall view. But I'm happy to answer any questions you may have, and happy um, to talk about anything specifically. Senator, have we um, succeeded in telling you what the work district has been doing uh, relative to our climate resilience planning? Uh, and if not, perhaps we could uh, take some time with you in the future to update you on, on, on the progress that we're making on that. We had, I think, our most robust conversations about that and the planning and it was um, and dealing with the Municipal Harbor Plan and that redraft with Michelle when I was running. Um, and I think that there was a lot of conversations going on, um, but I don't know, I, I would love an update. I would love an update. I would love to know how I can help to enhance and amplify what you want. Great, because we, we have developed a uh, climate resilience task force. Um, thanks to um, Representative uh, Mikowitz, we got uh, a quarter of a million dollars uh, in, in last. last year and, and there's an earmark for another 
uh, going forward. And we have a, um, we're really closing in on a on a serious master plan that uh, we want to make sure that um, as many people as possible are aware of, so that we can uh, work through the many hurdles that, right. <laughs> that it will represent. Um, so we'll hope to get some time with you in the future to to share that with you. Oh, I'm excited, absolutely. I know we have sent updates, but there's so much going on when we really right. need to sit and, and meet. Plus we're coming to a, a critical point we in are. terms of the project, so. Yeah. Okay. Um, other questions for Senator Edwards? That, uh, sounds like you've got your hands full and you're getting a lot done. But one year, all that in one year? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it went by really fast actually. It, I'm very, I'm, I'm genuine. Well, first of all, I, I really should have started out with thanking you. And I do thank you. Um, one, in helping me become the senator um, during the special election, but also now I'm the officially the, the senator elect of the third Suffolk. The, the name has changed and so did our district. So we, I no longer run the length of the Greenway. I actually go up, up into Beacon Hill and over into the hill uh, and take up Back Bay now, all the way to Fenway. So a good chunk of, I've lost Chinatown, I've lost um, the South End, the Leather District. Those areas went to uh, Senator Nick Collins. And so now I kind of run the spine of downtown Boston and the fin uh, and um, parts of the Financial District and Beacon Hill, of course, and, and the North End and North End Waterfront. Um, so it is different, certainly, um, but I am grateful. And so thank you. Um, sure. For and is that is that a done deal? That's. Uh, it, it better be. I would. Oh, sorry. That's oh, not the redistricting. No. It's different than the redistricting. That's different than the redistricting. It's just different than the redistricting in the city hall that is happening. Okay. This is for the statewide redistricting has happened. That is a done deal. That is the new district that I have. Um. So that is. Yep. And um, so I have now my first two years and that's why a lot of the conversations I'm having are on the bills I'm gonna introduce, my own bills, instead of inheriting what Senator Von Corey had before, I am now starting my own kind of set of narrative around schools, around environment, around workers' rights, around you know all sorts of different things on my own. So I'm very excited about that. Great. Uh, Joanne, you have a question, I see. I do, thank you. Senator, it's wonderful to see you as always. Uh, I want to congrat congratulate you and the others who are working on uh, enhancing a or creating a new ferry system. It has always been appalling to me that we have this amazing resource and we don't use it. I remember years ago, City Councilor Sal Lamatina of East Boston, and he represented the North End too. Um, I mean, he worked so hard to try and get a ferry to East Boston. And uh, you know, now we can take the ferry to Charlestown as long as on a weekend. Uh, well, I don't even think they operate on weekends now. And but you have to be back by seven or eight o'clock at night. Uh, so it's it's just such short sighted, simple thinking for the city of Boston, in my opinion, that we haven't used this and to have an inner harbor mm -hmm. uh, ferry system to go from the seaport to the uh, long wharf. You know, to just go around the harbor. What that would take off the roads is incredible. So is. I wish you well, and uh, I hope it's a very, very successful project. So people have the guts to do what they should have done years ago for the rest I'll, of the city. I'll tell you this: we got the um, inner just between the North End and East Boston a quick ferry while the Blue Line was down, mm -hmm. and then that got a temporarily extended. But during that two weeks not advertised altogether that well, but during that two weeks, we had peaks of 2,000 people a day Wow! using that ferry. Uh, it was so incredibly popular. And this is, you know, the blue line wasn't there. So I think that that did put some, pull some people above ground on the water. But I, I genuinely think if people would bike from their homes, bike down the dock, bike onto the boat. It was, it was the, oh, we can't bike on the blue line. So people were l using so many shorter forms of um, transportation to get to the to the ferry and then taking that 
that when we made it, and the other thing was key is making it part of the T system so that we paid the $2 or $2 and some change that we pay to get on the, on the, on the T. So I know people will use it. Um, I just don't know why we didn't build the infrastructure in the last some odd years, but we don't, can't worry about that. We're going to do it now. Well, we even had that in the municipal Harbor plan was major um, support, great support for that as that uh, municipal Harbor plan was in the works. And I think most everyone at the table was urging for a, you know, a ferry, uh, station, if you will, on Long Wharf. And of course, mm -hmm. that was converted into a park. <laughs> you know, thank heavens the thing didn't go through. But that was the kind of thinking instead of the practical put in a, a, a ferry stop. So thank you very much. And uh, again, congratulations on everything you're doing. Thank you. Matthew, you have a, a yeah, just a quick question for, for the Senator. Thank you so much for being here. Um, I, this is Matthew Murphy with Boston Harbor City Cruises, and we've been operating the uh, sort of the pilot uh, ferry to East Boston to Long Wharf, and it has been very successful coming to an end this month, but uh, we're really looking forward to that coming back, coming back in the spring. Um, and I think you're absolutely right. I think what we've seen is a lot of uh, folks with bicycles uh, that have, have been coming onto the ferry and then biking on to work or to whatever. Um, so that's been very effective from that standpoint. Um, we are obviously we're big fans of water transportation, not just with our company, but just in general, conceptually. And uh, we actually were involved with a pilot program uh, with a Lynn Ferry back in, I think it was 2014, 2015, and got a lot of really good uh, demographic information about who used that that ferry it was not just uh, folks from lynn it was from uh from from rockport from beverly uh and so forth and of course we also operate the, the salem ferry so the one piece i wanted to just put on your radar is the uh the piece you mentioned about um those who are being treated for substance abuse and uh, jobs for people we actually have, have uh, had a, a good good amount of success in our company in hiring folks who are going through programs or have graduated from treatment programs. Um, we're an unusual industry in that we are required uh, by the Coast Guard to have you know, random drug testing and so forth. So I think there's a, a really great opportunity to tie those things together because we have a real need uh, in the marine industry and passenger vessel uh, industry for crew, for maintenance people. Um, we have a whole in, internal captain training program. So I just wanted to just put that out there and also just to find out where, where the information can be found about uh, these new water transportation programs. Is there a specific hub at mass.gov where we could find that? Um, uh, the last, well, one, I wanted to say thank you. I will be sure to let a lot of the folks know who are graduating from this program um, connect them and, and try to build as many bridges as possible. Another bridge that I'm, I'm going to go ahead and, and um, also just put out there that I'm building is I'm on the, um, the New England Commission for Higher Education in Prison, uh, mm -hmm. specifically trying to make sure that uh, we bring advanced degrees or trade skills, um, making sure that if someone comes into prison, the goal is that they should if, they're, if we really believe in a person can change and be better, they've done their time, they should be getting some sort of education so that they don't come out and do the exact same thing they did when they to get them in that position. So um, I'm on that commission. And so if any of you have any suggestions um, about ways in, in which we can think of skill sets, I'm happy to do that. It's for all of New England connecting them. In terms of the um, who we're um, talking to in terms of building bridges at MassDOT, again, a lot of those folks are on their way out but I did get, um, what I asked for was a hub of information about all the available ports and all the available docks. Um, and they gave me a list, which was great. So we can actually start to plan, which is the goal. Um, it's a five-year pilot program that we have bonded for $28 million, by the way. And a lot of that is design. And so I'm hoping to meet with the new heads of these departments as soon as possible so that we can really genuinely talk about what does it look like? Is it, is it, Going from Gloucester to Salem to Winthrop, are we making multiple stops? Are we just all headed to one, all of us headed to Boston on different lines? I, I don't know. It was fun to think about, but I, I know my, 
I'll, I'll stay in my lane quite literally. I'm not a planner. <laughs> I'm like, see, my lane is above, it's on land, it's not on a boat, and I don't know how to do that. I, I just know how to get resources. And so we, we will, I do know we'll be working with a public-private partnership, and I do hope to bring in um, experts in this field so that we can get some of these studies with the cash that we have funded, $2 million just in Lynn, a $1 million on my end, so we can start to move these as soon as possible. Um, and, and the governor has the resources she needs. So happy to stay in touch about that. Um, happy to give you the map that I got um, that talked about all the little ports that we have. Some are publicly owned. Actually, majority of them are. Gloucester has privately owned. How do you integrate that? Um, are we going to get someone to just work for Gloucester? These are a lot of questions I, I don't have the expertise for. Again, I heard from my constituents about resources they wanted to have. And I think a lot of us is, is leaning on the partnerships we already have, either, you know, with, with, with your company, with other companies, it's, it's, it's not about reinventing the wheel. It's about providing resources for things that we know that work. Great. Thank you very much. That's excellent. Very great. Um, Senator, I know you're busy. Are there any other questions before we, uh, we thank you for your time? Very much appreciate your joining us. And uh, we look forward to continuing the conversation and best of luck. And could, I, could I just add oh, that um, anything that the community can do, this group can do to help support what you're doing, you know, and I'm sure other organizations um, here along the waterfront feel the same way, but please feel free to reach out to us so that we can help support you in, in the work that you're doing for, for the state and for our community. Thank you. Absolutely. And as I mentioned, I'm on the commission for higher ed in prison. I'm also now going to be on the transition team for Kevin Hayden. For those of you who are interested in criminal justice reform or have concerns. Um, and obviously, I just mentioned the big project kind of understanding about fairies. So what that is, an, is an invitation because I could very well be talking to experts right now. And I would love to learn from you. Thank you again. Thank you. Thanks, Senator. Thank you, Senator. Um, Have a good night. We're, uh, we're going to switch gears and hear from MV Restaurant uh, from Elizabeth Pisano. Uh, I believe is Elizabeth on the Zoom someplace. Actually, Mr. Chairman, it's Andrew Upton representing the applicants. Okay. And okay. With me is uh, Sherry Young uh, from the company. Uh, Hi, everyone. Welcome. There she is. Uh, this is a project at the former McCormick and Schmicks at the front end of Faneuil Hall. Um, it is called Margaritaville. Margaritaville. It is a Jimmy Buffett themed uh, <laughs> ca casual restaurant. I'm not talking. <laughs> no. Um, Will you stop it? Glad to <laughs> Go ahead. Bye. Glad to answer questions or, or uh, I, I can tell you so far, uh, we have been before the licensing board and been granted a liquor license for the premises. Uh, we're working with the landlord on the building permits and the associated ISD process to get that going and the build out should start fairly soon. What we are here for tonight is because we are going before the mayor's office of consumer affairs and licensing for an entertainment license. Uh, we're interested in uh, live entertainment, both inside and outside, uh, as well as TVs and the basic stuff inside. Um, so what I'd like to do, if it's all right with you, is just have uh, Sherry give sort of an overview of the concept, and then we can talk specifically exactly about what we're looking for and what your interests and concerns are. Thank you. Well, thank you for having me today. So Margaritaville is a, a restaurant inspired by the lyrics and lifestyles of Jimmy Buffett, of course, for a place where people can come and have a great meal and listen to great music and a fun and laid back atmosphere. Um, as we said, we're going into the space previously occupied by McCormick and Schmidt. We will have a two level restaurant, an outside patio area that will have 136 seats. 
On the first floor, we'll have a five o'clock inspired bar, five o'clock somewhere inspired bar that will have 12 seats in addition to 97 dining seats. And on our second floor, it'll be a tiki inspired area with a tiki bar that'll have eight seats and then an additional 136 seats. So a total of 200 and, or 389 seats in the overall property. And um, I think important to note here that we're a restaurant that has live music. We're not necessarily a music venue that has food. Um, and we're known for, of course, cheeseburgers, our great, you know, volcano nachos. And we're actually adding some uh, Boston inspired, inspired fare for this location specifically as well. And we're excited about coming into Faneuil Hall. How many, re how many seats are there or were there relative to the number you're going to have? Do you know, I don't know that answer. Um, I don't know that answer, how many McCormick and Schmidt had as opposed to how many we had. It's the same footprint pretty much. We did do some changing around of the kitchen area, um, but I think the footprint should be relatively close. Will, will this be similar to the other Margaritavilles that, uh, that are around? I've actually been to a couple. Great. You know, each one you you've been to a couple, you know that each one is specifically very unique, you know, unique to the area. Um, this one won't have the big trick like you see in a lot of our locations where you see where we may have a big volcano in the middle of the dining room or a blender that comes out of the ceiling. We do have a fun element that is a great photo op in there where we're giving a nod to the waterfront, um, but we won't have necessarily one of those what we call tricks inside of the restaurant, uh, but very similar as well. The one thing that we don't have is in a lot of the locations you'll see a big stage. We don't have stage. We plan to do more plug and play music here in regards to live entertainment where we'll have a solo or a duo um, that will be performing. And that's really playing more Florida style beach music um, that you would normally hear at one of our restaurants. No, I missed the big volcano, but um, it, <laughs> it was more tuned to, it was in St. Armand Circle which I think is more attuned to a Boston environment in terms of the feel of it versus blenders and volcanoes. Hmm. I, we don't have a restaurant in St. Ormond Circle uh, down in the Sarasota area. Well, I must be confused. Yeah. Um, and uh, remind us what it is that, that you are looking for from us other than Inviting us all for volcanoes or whatever. Okay, hey, for nachos, um, absolutely. For of course. Uh, Mr. Chairman, when we go before the uh, entertainment licensing board, uh, they will ask if we have had a community meeting. They will ask if we have worked with the mayor's office, um, and they will ask if there is support or opposition from the community. And of course, we're hoping for your support. Very good. Um, questions about uh, the proposed Margarita Bill. Uh, before, before we have questions, I just I just wanted to make clear that, uh, as Sherry said, we're looking for, on the live element, we're looking for one to two kind of guitar player, singer guys or gals, uh, but no uh, five piece amplified band, no stage, no dancing, even. just sort of music that goes with the dinner and the lunch. And as, as hours. Com as in, it's compatible with the music that's currently um, in the, the Quincy marketplace environment. On my visits there, I would believe so. Absolutely. Yeah, our goal, our goal is to have music that complements the dining experience. This is not a music show that's going to drown out your conversation. This is going to be mu music that plays while you're uh, eating and drinking. You know, we would expect that if someone played Sweet Caroline or Cheeseburger in Paradise, the crowd might sing along for a few minutes, but that would be the exception rather than the rule. And does Jimmy Buffett ever visit the Margarita Bills? <laughs> he does on occasion. The problem is, is you never know when he's going to show up. That's how he, that's how he operates for us. Well, if, if you knew the place would be overrun, so. <laughs> <laughs> that is correct. Other questions? Okay, at the end of the meeting, we'll have an executive session where we, our members vote on a uh, uh, decision to um, support or, or otherwise, but uh, thank you very much. And um, we'll uh, look forward to 
I'd imagine seeing you in the area. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. And if there are any follow-up questions, feel free to reach out to me. Thank you so much. All right. Thank, thank you all. You. Um, apparently, we're going to talk about graffiti. Am I showing a... They raise this slide. Yes. Yeah. It would be slide two. Uh -huh. yeah. We received an inquiry from from someone through the website asking about um, being in touch with someone from the city regarding uh, the graffiti policy in Boston and um, the fact that they had made calls to 311, but they weren't seeing any results. So I spoke with, in addition to um, some help from Sheila Willard in providing me some information, I then took the information and spoke to somebody um, in the city regarding the, uh, the graffiti um, procedures and policies. And um, I noted here on the slide that the, uh, doing, um, making a call to 311 is critically important, but that doesn't always result in immediate removal of the graffiti. That the, um, they work in a way that groups um, who do the cleanup go to various neighborhoods um, at certain times and um, when needed, and then remove multiple locations of graffiti, so you wouldn't necessarily see a one-off removal. The, um, if it's on private property, it's expected that you, um, the property owner, would remove the graffiti. The city doesn't provide that service. And um, one of the big things is that the graffiti cleanup is limited by the weather, and it's not effective in the cold. And it's effectively, starting at right now um, where they're not going to be able to remove graffiti. So they are happy to come before the council um, at one of our meetings next year and discuss this further, but it is something that the city of Boston takes very seriously and they work with the neighborhoods and they encourage us to call 911 I'm sorry, not 911, 311 uh, regarding graffiti. Uh, Sheila, I don't know if you want to add anything else to this. No, I think that's sufficient. Do you know what the where the complaint came from, though? I'm just curious. Yes, I do have the name of an individual who called. No, or the location of the graffiti. No, that uh, unfortunately they did not provide that location. Okay. Okay. But I'd be happy to offline give you that the information if you wanted to reach out yeah i'll i'll follow up with it terrific i think i know where it is though actually well i i know we do seem to have a section near battery march street mm -hmm. that um there seems to at, at the present time anyway have a, quite a bit of graffiti so but i'm yeah. not sure that that's the area but yeah, and Seaport in Atlantic has it. Okay, now whatever you want me to follow up, I'll be more than happy to. Thank you, Sheila. Any, any, any other questions about what comments were? No comments. Um, thank you for that. Uh, do we have an update on the sole cannabis dispensary, is that right? Yeah, that would be me again. Okay. Um, I just wanted folks to know again that um, for those that are unfamiliar with it, uh, Soul Cannabis is um, a proposed dispensary in Quincy Market where the old Durgan Park restaurant used to be. So at this point in time, it um, is going to be decided tomorrow whether or not the, um, the uh, Boston Cannabis Board will approve the sole cannabis dispensary because there is what they call a buffer zone conflict with another cannabis establishment 
meaning that they're too close to each other. They're supposed to be a um, radius of uh, half a mile, right? half a mile um, between cannabis dispensaries. And there have been exemptions and exceptions. And we have two of them here in the Wharf District right now, um, one on State Street and one on Broad Street. Oh, and, but, and, another, one and another one coming on High Street. So this would mean there would be four of them, four cannabis dispensaries. There, there are some, some medical ones too, but that's outside the Wharf District. But there will be four of them if this is approved. We have in the past submitted a letter uh, requesting that um, it not be uh, approved because of the existing dispensaries that we're, we were going to have in the area. It doesn't appear like there's anything further that we are able to do or at being asked to do on this, um, but... Um... There is a meeting tomorrow. Um, the information is on the slide. You can also get it from the um, City Hall website. And you can attend this, um, but they will not be taking any additional testimony. The three of you added so much and, um, to this story over the last uh, uh, two years. Three of you so much and to be continued. Cecile so Richards. You're on mute, Mark. Yeah, sorry. Uh, any questions uh, about uh, soil cannabis? Just a quick one, Do you have an update on what's happening with the other developments? It seems like, for example, High Street still has the for rent signs. Yeah, I think uh, Marie St. Fleur is on the call, is that? Yes, I am, Mark. Hello. Good. Are you able to give us any update on what's happening with High Street? Yeah, we are still um, waiting on the city. We can't do anything until we probably can remove the the for rent sign now um, that the, the landlord was waiting for on refinancing and all of that, and that's complete. Um, but most importantly, we, we received our provisional license. We submitted our, our architectural plan to the Boston, um, to the city of Boston. We're waiting for them for the final review because we can't go in and do anything until we they finally we they provide us final review. On the on our own end, we've been identifying the, the the workforce that we need to go in and do the build out once we get the okay um, to be able to go in. Um, we've hired a consultant um, to work with us on our hiring. Um, so um, again, we're getting ourselves ready, but we have to wait for the city of Boston. Um, to finish its review of our of our architect, architectural plans, we submitted it that back in April uh, in um, August, and um, we're still waiting. Um, so that's that that's where we are, and it's you. and you know we're paying the bill while we're waiting. Mm. Thank you for that. Uh, I don't see either Fernando or uh, Tito on at the moment, so uh, I don't think we have any update. Uh, and for the other two locations, I thought that 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 um, Tito Jackson's was going to be open by now, but um, I haven't seen that it is. No, it it hasn't. Uh, I'm, I haven't heard any uh, any reason why. I I know with Fernando's they're still doing construction. Right. They run into construction issues in the building. Right. Okay, um, thank you, Marie, for that. Um, thank you. And thank for joining us. Um, we, uh, we have Chris uh, Cook here to be able to um, tell us a little Hi, bit. Hi, Marie. Uh, let's see, I, I need to stop sharing here, I think, or no, I'm just, uh, let's see, there we go. Um, Chris, you're gonna give us an update on um, what's going on with the green light, right? Yeah, just, just winter lights and then happy to answer any questions. I'll be fairly brief. First, I just wanna 
thank the Wharf District Council again for its partnership in particular, sharing some of your leadership with our board. So Suzanne, thank you very much for your board service. Uh, you know, Brad Snyder uh, is a board member. I think, is Helena Patrick Heidi on the call? I thought, I thought she was on the call earlier, but I wanna thank Helena. And I know, I think Jenny was on the, the call at some point too, right? So she Jenny Morris. was, I'm not sure if she still is. But very, very grateful to the board. And then the other thing while I'm here, I have to say, you know, um, we love all the communities and everyone that we, we work with along the Greenway, the one and a half miles. But when we do an analysis of where our support comes from and just sheer numbers, you know, our philanthropic support comes from the Wharf District. So I just, I just really want to say thank you again uh, for everything that everyone does. Um, so that being said, if you could advance to the next slide. Uh, so I think everyone's familiar with the existing winter lights on the Greenway. It's a, it's a fun kaleidoscope of color. Uh, it's not throughout the entire park, but you have Harbor Fog by Ross Miller, the light blades and the carousel. Um, but there has been some dark patches throughout the park, uh, you know, in its 10 years. And some of that is uh, fundamental. And some of that is uh, because we all anticipated buildings being in the Greenway at some point, and there was a further design evolution that was going to happen, but it settled into a park. And so what we're realizing now is that especially heading uh, as part of our COVID-19 Boston's recovery strategy, we can't be a three season park and be the spine that unifies all these hospitality attractions, whether it's the Seaport, Manual Hall Marketplace, the TV Garden, we stretch all the way from the West End down to Chinatown, it means that we also have to be active in the winter. So if you advance to the, the next slide, Mark, um, in support of these initiatives that Mayor Wu and the city, as well as a better city who runs our Greenway Business Improvement District of activating Boston in the winter, the Greenway Business Improvement District run by a better city under the leadership of Rick Domino supported $150,000 worth of activations for us to add winter lights uh, to the Greenway. And so we had a very compressed timeline to do this, uh, released an RFP in August, responses were due like barely a month later. And then we got this really amazing team of artists, including uh, Ross Miller, who is responsible not only for Harbor Fog, but those sort of iconic um, hanging luminescent uh, installations that are in downtown crossing that we're all so familiar with. So it's an artist that is, is very familiar uh, with the downtown settings and how people use these spaces. So if you don't mind going to the next slide, Mark. And so the concept that they've come up with, uh, again, through the support of the, the business improvement district is this concept of ribbons, sparks and beacons. And so these are really light touches that you would experience as you go through the park. And what's most exciting is that the, the central um, real destination piece of the whole uh, installation will be right in the Wharf District uh, uh, on parcel 18. Uh, and so we envision that at, at different points, we may be able to activate uh, the space that normally Trillium would occupy with maybe some winter theme programming. And I know Keelan Caldwell, uh, who is our director of external relations and programming is on the call. And so Keelan's there to answer any questions or correct me if I get anything wrong. Mm -hmm. But uh, there'll be, uh, you know, sort of a scattering of these, of these beacons, these sparks, these ribbons throughout the park, but they will sort of uh, have a crescendo right here on parcel 18, which we think will be an exciting opportunity to imagine uh, what further installations can be. And if this is successful, we would think the business improvement district would support this every single year. And the reason we're doing this approach as opposed to the traditional lights and trees is the Greenway has always been a little bit different, right? The program has been different, the public art has been different. And so we do think there's an opportunity that, that maybe one every two years, we cycle through a different art installation that actually provides you know uh you know a brief respite from the dark but also creates um, um some excitement and, and activations so if you go to the next slide i just want to go over some long-term lighting projects as i said the original parks construction 
contemplated further build out of actual facilities and buildings, especially when you talked about parcel 19, parcel 21, parcel 22, Dewey Square. So they actually never incorporated major lighting into the pathways there. And those parcels are very, very dark, uh, almost to the almost to the point of being dangerous. You know, a lot of people actually walk the sidewalks of that part of the park at night or throughout the winter. So again, working with the business improvement district, we've identified $260,000 to advance construction documents that will allow us to bid out lighting and pathway work on these parcels. Mm -hmm. So hopefully, you know, maybe two to three years from now, we would have brand new pathways that are very well lit and very welcoming. And more importantly, would provide electrical sources for us, not only for programming, but also for further art installations and to really activate those spaces. Again, it's just such a shame that they're so dark in the winter. They're really uninviting and they're really, really beautiful parcels. So we're excited about that project. If you go to the next slide, Mark, this demonstrates where these activations uh, that I spoke about, the ribbons, the beacon, the sparks will take place in our newest park, North Meadow on the Greenway, way up there by the TV Garden. Um, we're excited about that in the North End. Again, right here, uh, right outside where we're meeting today, the Warp District. Parcel 21, we're connecting into a power source there in Dewey Square. And it's our, it's our anticipation that this will complement those existing lighting language uh, that exist in those other parcels that we're not activating. Things like the light blades, things like the carousel, and that existing lighting uh, that we use, those little moon globes that we've seen throughout the, the North End from time to time. If you go to the next slide, I do want to give everyone, you know, you, you'll notice that one of the places we weren't activating was Chinatown. And that's very rare for the Greenway to have a program where we're not emphasizing Chinatown because we put a big emphasis on that community. And the reason for that is that we're actually advancing a million dollar lighting project in Chinatown. The Chin Park Lighting Project will make that park much, much safer, uh, not only in the, in the winter months, but really exciting. It'll give us the ability to light up the park in the summer months. So as, as many of you are familiar, Chinatown is one of Boston's hottest neighborhoods with the worst air quality. And in fact, this past uh, season, we actually had to cancel programming in the park because it was so hot in the middle of the day. So we think the addition of lighting in the park will allow us to extend the programming day into the evenings. We just, after two years, got our construction permit from MassDOT this week. So the scaffolding is going up this week and we're excited to go into construction and that'll be finished in the spring. Again, that's a million dollar uh, lighting project that we have there. And if you go to the next slide, Mark, I wanted to, you know, while we're on the subject of lighting, I just want to remind everyone there's an incredibly exciting public art project that's happening right now in the city of Boston. We are projecting with our partners at the Federal Reserve Bank when they use installation onto the Federal Reserve. As I walk back to the building today, I'll be able to enjoy it. It's a partnership with the Flavor Continues, which is a break dancing troupe. So we are projecting local break dancers onto the Federal Reserve Bank of Boston. It's just an amazing art project. And it's in partnership with Illuminus. That runs through November 29th. Uh, roughly from about dusk to 10 p.m., although we didn't adjust for daylight savings. So uh, maybe it's around six o'clock as opposed to five o'clock, we'll make that adjustment. But just an incredibly exciting art project and it's an amazing canvas. I mean, we think about the Dewey Square mural being a big canvas, but like, how does it get bigger wow. than that? So, so check that out, it's another, it's another exciting uh, on the theme of lighting. And then if you go to the, the last slide, Mark, I just, it's never too early to remind people <laughs> uh, that you know, winter will be over and uh, June will be here. We did set the date and we have some amazing co-chairs for our event. Uh, Helena Ajakai, who is the Executive Vice President of the Greater Boston Conventions Visitor Bureau, really dynamic leader in Boston. A dear friend, Matt O'Malley, who you remember as a Boston City Councilor, he's now the Chief Sustainability Officer of Vicinity. Uh, it'll be on June 8th at the Rings Fountain. And on the subject of lights, we're actually moving it a little bit later in the evening because what we found was, is early in the day was great, people really enjoyed it. 
people thought it was spectacular once the lights of the rings mm. fountain started to get active. So we want to give people at the event as much exposure to that really unbelievable uh, picture opportunity as the evening goes on. And again, I have to say thank you. It's a major event. It's impactful to the Wharf District. It causes some traffic. It's loud for a couple of days. And I'm very, very grateful for the partnership that we have with the Wharf District and making that happen. So I'm happy to answer any questions on any of those projects. And again, I want to thank Keelan Caldwell who's on the call. Really, that's exciting. Is that the thing on the Federal Reserve? Is that sort of a, a pre-recorded thing, or is it, it is? So it's it's, and I'm not going to do it justice. But so over the summer, the artists actually took video, live video of break dancers performing in a studio. She then rendered that into a com computer program, which creates the dripping image of the dancers actually generating you know, the almost liquid art. And so it's the kinetic movement of the dancers that then turns into this visual expression that actually drips down the Federal Reserve. So it's computer, computer generated, but it's based off that recording of those original dancers. Wow. Wow. Right, Paul. Chris, I, I remember, um, you know, going back five years when you were the Chief of Energy Environment and Open Space and I was at the Mayor's Office of Urban Mechanics. I was talking at one point about wintertime activation and sort of four season activation going on in the city. And it's just amazing to see all these projects here. And obviously Boston Harbor now and Stone Living Lab doing you know, four, four season activation as well. And um, I've wondered a couple of times, because I love that truly, you know, on the Greenway, yeah. one of my favorite places to grab a drink. <laughs> you know, I, I always wonder, is them not being open year round a business decision or is it a licensing decision? Is it a combo? It's great. It's a great question. So originally it was a business decision and a licensing decision. Um, but then very soon, you know, because of its popularity, because people so identify it so iconically with the neighborhood, people did want to extend to the winter. The problem is they never, they never winterized the system, right? And so the pipes, it's a very, it's a temporary system that's out there. Oh, wow. And so it would be a major capital outlay to, to winterize that system. That being said, um, I think there's two things. One is the bathrooms that are out there were always meant to be temporary, meaning they're supposed to go away in the off season. Now during COVID, we've provided a little flexibility to Trillium because it is an amazing, it's a major expense for them to do that. But we are going through the RFP process next year. So, you know, hopefully, listen, we love Trillium. We love being associated with their brand. But whether it's Trillium or somebody else, there's two questions that we have to ask for that RFP process. What is the final product that we want visually out there? And what is the activation that we want out there? And like I said, you know, Boston, we can't we can't rest on our laurels anymore. We can't be a free season town and think that hospitality and we're gonna all make our numbers and we'll take a little break in February. We have to activate January, February, and March, or else these other cities are gonna eat our lunch on recovery. And they kind of already are starting to. Right on. We had a very uh, substantive conversation uh, amongst a um, subgroup of the Work District Council recently on thoughts about how to activate the, the work district during the winter, um, which of course you're way ahead of us on, but um, <laughs> some, some good ideas came out of that and we, we should continue that conversation. We would love to be part of it. And, you know, as much of it's a, it, it is a strain on our organization, right, to be thinking about this sort of expansion. You know, in a, in a 2019 year, I think we were at 450 events and annually. This year we were at 375. Keelan will type in the correction, I'm sure she, she has the number. <laughs> You know, that, that, that's a lot, right? Sure. And so thinking about winter is, is hard, but it's existential, right? It's existential for the vitality of the right. neighborhoods and the weather's just only gonna continue to be a, a moving target. And so, you know, I, I, you know, as we start to look at December and January, they start to become okay months for activation. So we'd love to partner with you yeah. all on your ideas. Uh, I don't see if Luz is, uh, or, or Rick is still on, but I know that the aquarium is, you know, uh, shares that that interest in. So we we should we should convene um, as a many winter people summit. Possible. Yeah, right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Because it's in everyone's interest. Absolutely. Great, Chris. Thank you very much. Thank you very that. much. Appreciate it. Um, I Could I just ask when um, the, the the winter life program? How long will that? Through March. 
Yeah, through March. And that's, you know, with the only asterisk I would say is if it's a terrible failure, it'll only last a couple of weeks. So, yeah. <laughs> so, so, so it is an experiment, it, it, you know, in that spirit of the Greenway, it's, 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 it's an experiment. The easiest thing to do would have been to call one of the companies and string lights up in the trees. But that's not what the Greenway does, right? You know, we, we, want, we want the trees to be as healthy as possible. We want all those migratory passages for our birds. And so we took a non-traditional approach with low impact LEDs. And I forgot the best part of it, the holographic um, uh, uh, pieces that, that actually get created to bounce the light off of. Local school children right now in workshops at the Boston Public Library are actually creating those shapes that they're gonna shine light off that's gonna refract into the park. So literally kids are shaping the light that's gonna shine in the park. And then we'll be able to bring kids down and show them the activation. So the, the artists are putting a lot of thought into this and here's hoping it works. Wonderful, yeah, wonderful, great. Thank you very much. Um, Does anybody have any questions? Any, any questions about that? Questions, I, I oh, just sorry. want to. Uh, you, uh, just, just want to thank thank Chris and the Greenway team for all that they do. Uh, your your work is amazing. Thank you, Stephen. We appreciate your partnership. Absolutely. Um, I, I missed a a comment from Kathy. I think um, you did. So how do I get that back? Um, uh, Kathy Abbott says, "Welcome any and all to participate in the ice sculpture stroll. It keeps growing every year and is very popular with kids and families. It's a nice prelude to the fireworks. Indeed. Thank you." Yeah. Anything else Thanks. you want to My first thing. Did you want to say something, Kathy? No, no, I was just thanking Mark. I was just I'm trying to, you guys have a lot to cover. I didn't want to distract. No, that's great. Appreciate you doing that. Can you send us the information or tell us how to find out all about it so we can send it? Out Absolutely, once? yes. I will, um, I will have Re Rebecca get in touch with you tomorrow, Suzanne. Great. Great. Thanks so much for that. Before we go yeah. on the Greenway, can I tell them about the wreath? Yeah, sure. Um, on the, the building that um, houses the bathrooms for Trillium, um, we talked with the Greenway Conservancy and the Work District Council is going to put a large wreath on the building. And we're going to say, what did we say we're going to say? Um, yeah. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah, seasons that's, greetings. Something, something yeah, like that. Some seasons <laughs> greetings from the War District Council. So um, we thought that that would be a nice idea to uh, let people know that uh, we're celebrating the, the season and uh, giving a little bit of uh, additional spirit to the to the Greenway, our neighbors. So. That was excellent. That yeah. was it. Um, do you who uh, is you or Joanne? Jo uh, Joanne, are you still here? Yes, I'm still here. It, you're on. Okay, thank you. Uh, and now it's the real lights. <laughs> yes. Yeah, so now, yeah. <laughs> so this is the 20th year, 20 wow. years of illuminating the gorgeous trellises in blue lights. There's over 50,000 lights. Plus we illuminate 13 trees throughout the park. And uh, so this will be next Monday at five o'clock. Ceremony will start. Uh, Mayor Wu will be there and uh, she will throw the switch with children also having their hands on the switch. And uh, the big secret of that, that I can tell all of you because there are no children in the room is the switch does nothing. <laughs> <laughs> When we do uh, the countdown, we have to really shout loudly so that the electrician who is in the shed can get the real switch when uh, when we get to zero. It's Dino, um, Dino, Joanne. Dino, yes, Dino. Uh, his name is Dino, and uh, with the help of John Lentini. So, um, so this year the Marriott, as they do, they're. Uh, donating, they'll bring cookies and hot chocolate. Joe's Waterfront will have clam chowder. We have the North End uh, uh, kids singing holiday songs and a lot of other entertainment. And I expect, 
I, th I think we're just going to have such a crowd, you know. Yeah, hopefully the weather is decent. Well, not terrible. Um, but you were just talking, Chris, about winter activation. And uh, that was why we started the Tunnel of Love uh, six years ago. This year will be our sixth year of adding huge red illuminated hearts to each end of the trellis and uh, cherubs, illuminated cherubs uh, hang from the center section. We have romantic music. We have the big conversation hearts like uh, what you had when you were a kid, those little candy boxes, they love me. And so they're like five foot tall hearts that decorate the center trellis and people you know, great for uh, selfies and Instagrammable pictures. So that's all of the month of February. But that one of our reasons was to try and activate the area. So that would be a great thing for others to think. I've talked to Joe's Waterfront about putting red hearts, illuminated red hearts in their upstairs windows mm -hmm. to get that feeling to bring people down to the waterfront for that month and, um, you know, to visit the local restaurants and and uh, just enjoy the waterfront. People around the world, you know, Norway, Sweden, they don't all go hibernate January to March. So we have to figure out how to put on our warm clothes and get out and do things. Um, and then of course, we also will do the fireworks again this year. Friends of Christopher Columbus Park is leading the effort on that fundraising. I'm still shaking trees. Um, and uh, so that's that's gonna happen though. And I want to thank Kathy Abbott and uh, Boston Harbor Now because they do the permitting side of it for me. So uh, it's a wonderful collaboration that we have. And, and I think this whole community collaborates and I'm just thrilled to be part of it. So I hope I see you all at the trellis lighting next Monday night, five o'clock. Right, and the weather forecast is good, so. No matter what it is, we're gonna say it's good. Yeah. <laughs> no reason not to show up. Thank you very much, Joanne. Um, other other things before we go into executive session? Oh, we just have this and that. Slide five. <laughs> oh, oh I, I, okay. I'm sorry. Excuse me. Slide five. Unless uh, you know, if anybody has anybody else has something they want to add to the uh, yeah. to the meeting. Thank you for coming. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Thanks. Um, Oh, no, that's the wrong one. Hang on. Oh, leave that gal in the greenway. <laughs> it's free advertising. Uh, let's see. Come back here. I mean, I can just say go it. Ahead, go ahead, Ron. Look at this. I spent oh, a lot of time on this. There we go. <laughs> I, oh, I see Sarah had something. Sarah, do you want to say something before? Oh, I just wanted to um, invite everybody that might be interested to the Fort Point Waterfront Community Design Program um, this Saturday, November 19th, online or at Artists for Humanity. And their um, design teams that have um, been created um, will present their final designs and there'll be community conversations. And we're looking at what we all look at, um, which is making a resilient waterfront, making it inclusive and, inclusive and welcoming for all, and um, looking at ideas for ground floor and water sheet activations. So hope anyone that's interested might like to um, join us. This is a conjunction with the Four Point Neighborhood Association and led by Boston Harbor Now and um, with a few of um, many other partners, BSA, BSLA, and uh, the BPDA. Wonderful. And where will the results of that be shared? Um, I know we are, uh, the plan is to create a report and hopefully pull criteria from that report on um, these, in, in the, in these concepts. So um, coming, coming details exact um, mark on where that's actually going to live, but that's what we're working on. Yeah. But along with Stone, market, yeah, Kathy, thank you. Yeah, at a minimum, <laughs> it'll, it'll be on Boston Harbor Now's website, but I would imagine we'll be trying to get that out into as many places as we can. And we certainly would be sending it to the Wharf District Council, given all the work you're doing on the downtown. Right. Yeah. So uh, we certainly want to coordinate with that and um, happy to um, help post it. <clears throat> Great. Our... Wonderful. Yes. Thank you. Thanks. Good luck with that. Hope to be Thank there. you. Okay. Suzanne, now you get to talk now about your party. Now I get to talk about my party. <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, the I think we mentioned at the beginning of the meeting, so I won't say too much, but um, the New England Aquarium and the Ward District Council are inviting you all to a uh, Ward District holiday, holiday gathering on the 14th in lieu of our December meeting. And um, it'll be five to seven and hope you can all join us. Invitations will be going out and um, hopefully um, we'll just have so many toys for the, the kids that the Boston police will need a number of police vans to get them out of there. So. <laughs> Excellent, thank you. And thank you for Suzanne, of course, for organizing that. Um, any other comments, questions, thoughts before we uh, go into executive session? If not, thank you. Hope to see you all on December 14th. Yes. Or I went to Oh, okay. well, or, or where are <laughs> Thanks, guys. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Thank you very Bye, much. Everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone.